that was stumbled across this thing on the show bro that i thought was pretty funny and i think it's kind of cool and pretty funny but also as long as the necessary goal is being reached it's all good so this is clip going viral on the shade bar which features miss bank steph steph london and thames i think are there right yeah thames and it says um it's been looking very lit in ghana recently where uk rappers um sorry miss bank steph london was seen partying in nigeria with nigerian sorry singer songwriter thames and as most of you should know if you don't know for whatever reason ghana has now become like the new hot destination place to go to if you're somebody involved in the you know in hip-hop kind of urban environment here in the uk and everyone's kind of traversing over there i've seen a lot of american people going over there of course you've seen meek mill do his thing charter rapper's been out there for a while with um, vic mensa but it's definitely been popping off as per lately i think i saw a clip of lethal b from more fire crew he uh he's doing some property development out there as well and generally it's just become like a kind of a place to kind of go to um for the holidays and whatnot to hang out and people have been turning it into a new kind of hotspot after all the hype of dubai and places like that which has been quite cool to see of course and for me growing up in the hood or growing up in ends it's pretty nice to see this because i do remember there was a time when i was growing up where basically being proud of your being proud of your African roots was sort of kind of looked down on. People would go out their way to lie about where they were from. I remember this was the era where a lot of Nigerian girls, right, especially the lighter skinned ones, especially the ones that used to wear contact lenses, I remember because I dated one, that would uh, say that they were half Brazilian, that they had Portuguese in them, like loads of, especially, don't get me started Angolan girls. Angolan girls are the worst, but I remember Nigerian girls specifically, especially the lighter skinned ones, honestly, the fairer skinned ones would say so many lies about where they were from. They'll mention Dominican Republic, they'll mentioned Trinidad Tobago whatever nonsense I've mentioned but they wouldn't be proud of their African roots and some of them will change their names whatever it may be just crazy nonsense stuff and even if it was a time to go back home like imagine if it was like um what would you say imagine if it was um imagine if it was like christmas holidays and stuff you had to go back to visit your family they'd be like oh i have to go back home visit my family they'd be down about it they wouldn't up they wouldn't upload or share any pictures or something they wouldn't want to talk about it much when they came back like it was an absolute horror but there was a real real weird vibe around the whole thing no one wanted to be proud of the fact that they were african at all zero and i felt like in recent years a lot of the change has come about because of the music which is weird because i always thought it would come because of sports the, the better african players did in europe the better african teams did in certain competitions like the world cup and stuff or african nations or certain nations it would kind of spur people to represent and to be more patriotic but i feel like the music has done the best thing to it and i think the music has also been a good thing because it's sort of un it's sort of unfiltered and it isn't compromised. It's not like we're getting a sanitized version of Afrobeats here in the UK. We're getting some of the biggest people in Afrobeats, so Afro pop coming over to the UK and dominating. And we're also getting their influence in our music. So it's not even like we get like a sanitized version. We're getting the greatest version of it possible. And of course, with the plethora of flipping African people here in Europe, it's only going to get bigger and better. So that's been great to see. But I'm not going to lie. I actually enjoy and like seeing this thing because I think as well, another thing that I was thinking of that thought might be the reason for it is the whole Brexit thing maybe partially to do with brexit in that for whatever reason as having checked upon flights and stuff because i'm always you know what's that thing called i always keep um some destinations you know tracked on my google flights thing i think you, you should check it out if you haven't before google flights is ba basically like a sky scanner where it basically gives you like a list of different flights and different airlines and what they're charging and you get to basically see and keep an eye on you know what the charges are all across the board and i that generally kind of track some and ones I always track all the time are like, you know, London, Las Vegas, London, LA, London, New York, London, Florida, you know, Miami, so all these type of places. I kind of always checking them just to kind of see the flights. And it's been a while since I've checked last, maybe like a couple of months. But I remember when I was checking it a lot, I would never ever see anything under 500. And I remember there was a time prior to the pandemic and prior to Brexit where you could sometimes get flights to, you know, JFK for like 350. If it was like a random kind of week, you know, a random month somewhere in a calendar, you could get a flight to America, a flight to New York City for 350. Now I can't see any flights to America for under 500. And I, I remember also there was a time where I went to 
Bali and I think that those flights to Bali were like 400 or something crazy like that and now those flights to Bali you know the minimum is going to be 400 so clearly I think those destinations have priced a lot of us UK people out of going to those holidays because essentially if you're paying 500 pounds to go to America you can't really go there just for the week you kind of have to make it a two-week trip to make it a bit worthwhile and you know to gather up all the necessary people that you need to go to a holiday that costs 500 flights isn't going to be that accessible even if you are as rich and successful as these ladies are as Miss Banks, Teflon Don and Thames right they were all rich and successful people but still you want to make you know even if you're rich and successful doesn't mean you want to spend two grand on a flight just because you want to spend two grand sometimes you want to make it worthwhile so if you can go to a place like Ghana you can maybe take a couple of your friends along with you and maybe spend in total 5k on the flights which is still nothing if you think about it and then have you know great you know great accommodation great scenery be amongst your people also which is something that I think doesn't kind of get spoken about enough the fact that you know black people especially when we're in social environments there's a particular energy that we bring to spaces that is quite nice to see that reflected in other places as well where you go somewhere and you're not the minority for once which is like it's not it's, it shouldn't be an issue but i know for myself having traveled a bunch around the world as much as i try not to kind of keep it in my mind and i try just to enjoy myself it's something that you can't avoid when you go to certain places where you realize oh right i'm one of the only people here that looks like me right when i went to zagreb where you go to places like bali i went to places like nicaragua you realize okay cool i'm just on my own here and it kind of stick out like a soft farm it makes you feel a bit uncomfortable and you don't necessarily kind of catch a vibe where i'd imagine going to a place like africa but going to a place like ghana specifically where you are legitimately amongst your own people it must be quite enriching it must be quite nice to be relaxed in that social environment even though i'm sure to african people other black people that come from europe stick out like a soft farm i'm sure of it there's you know they can tell us they can tell us apart from a mile away I still think it's quite a nice thing to have and to experience in real time um, this kind of renaissance taking place there in Africa and I'm really really loving it um, and everyone that's kind of going there and kind of making it hot and I'm sure the making it hot thing for some people is not going to be the greatest I remember I saw a clip just now of French Montana on the Math Hoffel podcast talking about how he's a bit you know pissed off that St. Bart's is going to be you know baited up by next year or something because Drake French Montana Fabrice and stuff have been heading over to St. Bart's as they saw new destination holiday destinations i'm sure people have now kind of planned their next summer trips to go to St. Bart's because of how they've been kind of blown up on their platforms and i know a few people on my timeline who have been going to Ghana and stuff and having a great time and meeting up and linking up with people that we kind of you know maybe share in common and you know i can sit here and base say yeah it is annoying to see but i'm not gonna lie to see people legitimately standing and being proud in their africanness and kind of going out there and enjoying those holidays and it's essentially you know, cause, you know i've grown up in areas where legitimately the only time you'd go to africa is if your parents forced you to or if you're in trouble or something so the fact that young people are leaving london and going to a place in africa is a big deal um on the of their own volition to go and hang out and have a good time is absolutely sick to see so hopefully this continues going forward and we see people going to far-flung places across africa i mean tanzania zimbabwe mozambique angola kenya botswana whatever it may be they're traveling all across the place and kind of making it a bit of a cultural destination to go and travel to because unfortunately we're now being priced out of the americas the southeast asia's have probably the same sort of vibe so if you can if you are going to travel 10 plus hours why not go travel to see your people like i was thinking the same thing when the whole ama piano thing was popping up i was like you know what i'd love to go to south africa for a week or two weeks and just see what that vibe is like actually in the locale where that music is made and experience it in real time and hopefully that happens sometime in the future but yeah big up thames big up um steph london big up miss banks out there making it hot making it big and clearly having a good time and hopefully we see more of it going forward hopefully we see more of it going forward